So here we have three CPUs. The top one is the Pentium 133 from my Micron computer. The left is the MMX 200 from my MMX 200 computer. And the third one there is a new regular 200 megahertz CPU. I bought the new CPU to upgrade the Micron and also to see whether MMX really made that big of a difference. I'm going to be using the MMX computer for the testing since this motherboard supports both the MMX CPUs and the non-MMX CPUs. One thing to note about the MMX CPUs is that they use a dual voltage and a lower core voltage. Not only does this motherboard have the jumpers to switch to dual voltage, but it also has jumpers to switch the voltage itself. The first time I tried running the 200 MHz CPU, the non-MMX, I made the mistake of not actually changing the voltage, so I ran the CPU at 2.8 volts instead of 3.45. This led to the computer being very unstable, giving me messages I can't read, and also tricking the computer into thinking that there are bad sectors on my hard disk. There were even a few times where it gave me a device initialization error and told me that I had to restart my computer. I thought the CPU was bad since the 133 worked in the same configuration, but I guess the 133 liked being run at 2.8 volts for whatever reason. So I guess the lesson of the day is to consult the user manual for your motherboard if you can find it before switching your CPU. First we're going to start with three different DOS benchmarks just to see what the difference would be in DOS. The first of which will be the PC player benchmark. So with the MMX you only get a 4.6% difference. Up next will be the second version of the 3D bench benchmark. Obviously we can't use the first version since it caps out at 66.6 .6 frames per second, kind of a funny number. Anyway, you only get a 3.5% increase with MMX. Up next we have SpeedSys where we can actually see the speed of the cache and how much we have. Since this program only tests the data cache, you will only see half the cache on either CPU, so you can only see 8 kilobytes on the regular 200 MHz Pentium. When we run it on the MMX CPU, you can see that it has twice as much cache available. Also, the difference between the CPU speed is very, very small for this benchmark. I'm guessing this benchmark doesn't utilize the cache, so it's testing just the raw CPU itself, and obviously there's not very much of a difference between the two CPUs. Up next are the Windows benchmarks, well, one benchmark and two games. This is 3D Mark. It seems there's a bigger difference between performance with these CPUs when running Windows, probably because of uh, more advanced calculations or whatever. Also the 3D cards of the time seem to be a bit more CPU dependent. The difference in CPU speed can greatly affect your performance in the 3D card department. I'm guessing we will be seeing a bit more difference between the CPUs when we start running 3D games such as Forsaken here. This is running on the 200 MHz non-MMX CPU. I don't really have the means to get the average frame rate between all of this, so I'm not sure what the exact benchmarks will be, but we can kind of see the difference just by looking at the frame rate counter while watching gameplay footage. Since the frame rate is unstable with this game, you can't really make any direct comparisons, however, in the first area there with the first four enemies, the lowest frame rate has ever gotten on this CPU was 35 frames per second. I guess we can compare that to the other CPU. So while playing in a similar manner with all the same settings and uh, the faster CPU, the lowest it has gotten was 47 frames per second. So that's a pretty big jump right there. So judging by that, and even though I don't have the objective numbers, they can just go by what it felt like when I played the game, it was definitely a lot smoother with the MMX CPU, so I guess that's where the MMX CPUs shine is more on Windows programs. Here's another rather heavy area where the 200 non-MMX CPU gets down to about 20 frames per second while shooting all this stuff. In the same section, the MMX only gets to about 30 frames per second minimum, although this could be due to the way I'm playing, or uh, any other number of factors we don't know entirely, since this is actually a gameplay benchmark, I suppose. Either way, the MMX CPU seems to be holding the frame rate a bit more stable, or more playable. The last game I'll be comparing is Moto Racer. This game holds its frame rate a little bit more stable. 
One part I'm going to be looking at with this comparison is the very beginning of the race. As you can see with the non-NMX CP, it dips down between 19 and 23 frames per second. I guess throughout the race it also just kind of stays down in that range. So on the MMX CPU, you can see it dips to about 25 frames per second right at the beginning where there's all the moving objects, and around the middle of the race it hangs anywhere between 25 to 30. So it does seem that Windows benefits more from the MMX CPU than DOS does. I also wanted to test the performance of Windows-based 2D games such as Roller Coaster Tycoon. However, I couldn't find a program or a some sort of switch to turn on a frame rate counter for such a game, so I can't really do that. Roller Coaster Tycoon has a minimum CPU requirement of a Pentium 90, but recommends a 200 MMX for uh, decent playing and for best a 450 MHz Pentium 2. But with a Pentium 200 MMX, as you're seeing here, it's still pretty freaking sluggish. You would have to be pretty brave to be using a 90 MHz CPU for this game. I also tried turning on some of the options from FastVid to see if I could get any more performance out of the MMX CPU and DOS, however, that only provided an extra 0.1 frame rate onto the PCP benchmark, so I guess that did basically nothing. If you had to decide between the two CPUs for mainly DOS games, I guess it really wouldn't matter which you would pick. However, if you're going to be playing Windows games that use 3D accelerators, you definitely want to go with the MMX since it actually has an advantage in that area.